Now let's talk about using the camera's creative modes. These give you control over critical aspects of what the camera is doing. It allows you to blur the background uh, or show the background as completely sharp. It allows you to freeze motion or show motion blur, depending on what you, the photographer, decide. If you have no idea what aperture is, I'll give you a brief overview, but I have a whole free video at sdp.io slash f-stop, which goes into intense detail. <laughs> First of all, the aperture describes the iris of the lens and how open it is. It's just like the iris of your eye, which opens in dim lighting or closes in bright light so you don't blind yourself. Big openings are low f-stop numbers. So f2 is a big opening, f32 is a small opening. You can think of it as a fraction. Like 1 over 2 is bigger than 1 over 32, right? It was for the math inclined. Uh, Besides lighting in different amounts of light, it also changes the amount of background blur. So these pictures were taken with an 85 millimeter lens. At f1.8, you can see the background is completely blurred. Creatively, this isolates the subject. The person looking at the picture looks only at Chelsea here and gets a sense for what's going on in the background, but maybe can't tell where it is or what's really happening. Choosing a higher f-stop number like f8 starts to show some detail. It tells some more of the context. It lets her know she's in an alley. I can see a building back there, but there might be a couple of people in the street. Using a high f-stop number like f32 puts everything in focus and allows you to more specifically know, oh, I actually know that alleyway. I can tell what model of car that is. It could be a distraction from the subject, the portrait, or it could be a key part of storytelling. Again, that's the job of you as the photographer to decide that.